Welcome to the Roman Time Machine. This episode will describe the story of Aeneas and his relation to the city of Rome. One point before we start, Aeneas is not a historical figure. He belongs to the realm of myth and legend, and we get most of the story of Aeneas from Virgil and from Homer. Aeneas is a prince of Troy, which is a city that's in modern-day Turkey, and Aeneas was the son of the goddess Venus, or in Greek she's called Aphrodite. And Troy is most famous for the Trojan War, which ended when the Greeks snuck into the city of Troy in a wooden horse and killed as many Trojans as they could. Aeneas was in the city, but he was warned in a dream from the gods about the attack, and he managed to escape with his father and his son. And the image of Aeneas carrying his father on his shoulder with his son at his side is a very common one in art. So his father is called Anchises, and his son is called Ascanius. His father is carrying the Penates of Troy. Basically, they're the household gods, but for the whole city. So after he escaped, Aeneas got together with as many Trojans as he could save, and they sailed off from Troy to have adventures and find a new land to settle the Trojan gods. At first, he was taking directions from his father, Anchises, who did not know where they were going. But Anchises died in Sicily, and then the Trojan fleet was caught in a storm that drove them to Carthage in North Africa. The queen of Carthage is Dido, and she had heard of the Trojans and welcomed them and invited them to stay in the city with her. Aeneas told her the story of their escape and all of their adventures, and Dido eventually fell in love with him and even treated Ascanius like he was her own son. But the gods didn't want Aeneas to stay in Carthage, even though he was really happy there, and Dido even considered him to be her husband. But the gods told Aeneas he had to leave. So when Dido found out about this, she killed herself on a funeral pyre. And the story of Dido and Aeneas is like a whole epic, a whole topic on its own. So the Trojan fleet, after they left Carthage, they ended up in Italy, where they had more adventures, including visiting the underworld and waging a war in the region Latium. After they waged the war, Aeneas married Lavinia, the daughter of King Latinus, and founded a city that he named after his wife, Lavinium. Rome is on this map, but hadn't been founded when he died. But his descendants from Lavinia eventually culminate in Romulus and Remus. So there's Aeneas, there's Romulus and Remus. Romulus and Remus were responsible for founding Rome. By linking the founders of Rome to Aeneas, the Romans were really connecting their history, which them was quite modern, to the cultures of Greece and Troy, which would have been ancient even to the ancient Romans. So this legitimized their power by linking themselves to more established ancient cultures. And that is the story of Aeneas in a nutshell. If you want to learn more about Aeneas, you should read The Aeneid by Virgil or the Iliad by Homer. Thanks.